Hey everyone, my name's Silver. Welcome back to the channel. And today, guys, I got the rules update video for you. So, with the Card Fight Vanguard series being rebooted and restarted, we have a few new rules that we have to go over. Now, you might have seen this video already on some other channels. A lot of people covered it all at once. But I figured after my video the uh, yesterday, I would give it some time to settle down. And I'd cover these today. I wanted to wait until we got a full breakdown and after the rules we're going to be covering all the different um gif things and which clans are covered by them so without further ado let's get into the rules all right so the rule changes for mulligan have changed um so mulligan a is when you put any number of cards from your hand back to the top of your deck and you shuffle and draw new cards that's no longer how that works now you place any number of cards from your hand to the bottom of your deck and you draw equal cards in the draw equal cards then shuffle your deck so this can be good and bad i use and i do agree with a lot of people that i did like shuffling my deck before i draw but i can see where it's fair because if i put the cards to the bottom of my deck i have a lower chance of getting those same cards back especially if i only run one or two of those cards that some decks do and getting them back then instead of later is better or not better but is better than now i won't have to get them back it still works and you still shuffle your deck. A lot of people are just thinking you put them to the bottom and you draw it and that was it. Because, again, all we had were translated rules from Japanese. But this is the official translation and this is the official rule change. Um, GSS has also changed. So the requirement used to be you needed... The requirement for two or more cards in your G-Zone needed to be removed. And removing, two card, and removing those two cards has been erased. Then the fighter looks at the top five cards of their deck, chooses one card card that's grade grade is one or higher than your vanguard, shows your opponent at your hand, and if you add it to your hand, choose two cards from your hand and place them outside of the game. Wait, the requirement for two or more cards in your G zone and removing those two cards. Have... Okay, so I that was confusing for me for a second. So essentially, what you do, what you used to have to do, is Look at the, uh, declare Jesus, show your hand, look at the top five cards of your deck, add a card to hand, remove two cards from your G-Zone, and then remove two cards from your hand. They have since taken away the rule for G-Assisting from removing two cards from your G-Zone and removing them from play. You still have to remove two cards from the, from your hand out of play though, which is good. And I believe you still have to show your hand, hopefully they'll clarify that later on. But as of now, it doesn't look like you need to show your hand. But I'm going to assume you still do. Um, guards also have changed a lot in this uh, upcoming series. So guards. There is now no requirement that cards placed, over, placed on your guard circle have to have their grade match or be less than your vanguards. So meaning, if you're at grade 0, you can guard with grade 1s, 2s, 3s. Which is really going to change a lot of the story for Vanguard and I'm going to do a theory video on that later and how that's going to affect the game and there's also new stride requirements and stride ruling changes so any future stride card past set 14 that we get should have this so the stride requirement normal stride can be formed on the following terms when both players are at grade 3 or higher or when you're when the fighters turns when the turn fighter's vanguard is three or higher at the start of the turn. Meaning if my opponent goes first and he's trying to stall me at grade two. So I ride grade two. Or no, um, a better example would be is I go first, I ride grade three, my opponent stalls at grade two. Well, normally you can see Breeze, but with the new changes, I can literally just go, well, Dragonic Overlord the Purge. Instead of having to see Breeze to get my GB1 off. This will make it better, and you don't need to be. At, your opponent doesn't need to be at grade three or higher. I hope they do something similar for Legion, because that was a problem with Legion decks, even though they had a bit more edge when your opponent tried to do that. Also, once per turn, if a symbol is immediately after an auto or an act symbol, if the game state changes after resolving the effects, you will be unable to use this ability. Meaning the once per turn is still in effect, it sh seems like. Um, you, you can combine... So you can combine 5,000 and 10,000 power triggers into the same deck. 
Um, I thought that said you can't or cannot, but I guess I was wrong. Um, you can have any number of front triggers in your deck, up to 16, so the standard besides the heals. Um, front triggers apply on damage checks. Front triggers work with units that cannot be chosen since you don't choose the units on the front row, you just choose the entire front row is just affected. It's essentially like choosing the circle. And last but not least, Ultima Xeroth Dragon of Zenith Peak cannot alter the effect of a front front triggers. It applies to all front row units and does not that the it does not choose. So it doesn't work like the critical ones do, which still is pretty good. So with that being covered, those are the major rule changes that we have to look forward to. And I think some of these rules will really, really help out the game and its longevity. And I understand some people are upset about how this how this has affected the game or what's happening. But a lot of people are really excited. And I'm sorry if you feel that this is not good for the game. But we're going to move on to the imaginary gifts now. So um, these are all, as you guys know... Um, the gifts are a seal. I need to really Google how you say that. Um, give me a second, guys. I'm kind of annoyed that I don't know how to say this word. And I'm going to need to know it. There we go. This is seal definition. Um, one second. I'm trying to figure out. Excel? I guess that's Excel. Alright, um... Let's see, one more second, I am sorry. Yeah, Excel. So, Excel, I keep saying a seal. No, it's Excel, the offensive. So, these are the clans that will have the Excel. Nova Grappler, Tachikazi, Aqua Force, Pale Moon, and Murakumo. The ones that will have... Balance, or the Force, is Royal Paladin, Kagero, Spike Brothers, Dimension Police, and Shadow Paladin. The ones that will have defense are Oracle Think Tank, Mega Colony, Grand Blue, and Dark Irregulars. Now guys, you might realize there are some clans without these. Well, that happens. We're not going to be seeing... Sorry. We're not going to be seeing a lot of... Uh, y clans that were introduced in season two so nurikami um nurikami and gold paladins we will not see in this season we will also not see gear chronicle i'm surprised we're going to be getting any form of um what's it called aqua force support at all because aqua force didn't exist in season one neither did really mega colony we also won't see neo nectar in this season um, what other clans? We won't see Link Jokers. It's a lot of clans. They've just up in Kaboot because they don't exist during the season. Which, again, I have more theory videos coming out and hoping that Black Moon will be able to join us for some of these theories. Alright, so those are the clans. I have theories to follow up later. And let's move on to the last bit of tunes. So, symbols have changed in the game. As starting of the new season, we will have new symbols. Counter Blast, Soul Blast, Counter Charge, and Soul Charge will be changed to look similar to these signals. They will no longer have these, which I'm okay with. So it looks like the full mark, this right here, a full blue box counts as a Counter Blast, whereas, a, whereas an empty blue box counts as a Counter Charge, and they also have points and banners. I like this a lot. I understand that this was nice, but at the same token, this just looks better instead of trying to have to memorize this is that, this is that, this is that, this is that. Because teaching new people as well made it kind of hard. For this to actually to say what it does or to be much more clear on what it does is easier to remember. Obviously, I'm assuming it'll say counter blast, soul blast, well not physically say it, but C, C for counter. And this will say blast, this will be S for blast, this will be C charge, S charge. That's what I am assuming those are going to say in English. And again, I like that. That makes sense. It's logical. Lastly, there's one other new thing we need to be aware of. And that is cards from this set forward will also contain a V in the new era. It will be the only cards legal in standard. 
So that was one other thing I'm going to talk about during this video that I did technically get wrong was how the new series works. So I had said something along the lines like after the standard after the new standard and premium goes into play, you can no longer use your old cards. I was technically wrong there. In the premium game format, you can use all of your cards, any card from any era. It has a steep learning curve to new players and will be very stagnant because most decks will not have the proper support for them. I see a lot of decks in premium just being from the new sets and using G units from their clan to help boost, being that there's a lot of new rule changes or Xeroth Dragons. I really don't see these cards being, I don't really see anything from G behind it being used and I expect premium to die off pretty fairly quickly just cause again these decks are no longer getting support. We are promised that we're going to get at least one booster box with a clan, a clan within it and support for that clan. So each clan will get support once a year. But at the same token, I don't see premium lasting all that long in this series. Now, that's probably going to do it for this. I have another video I'm coming up with later on. But until next time, guys, I will see you all later. I've been the Civil Wolf. Bye for now. And peace.